It's Sports Talk West Virginia on 95.7 FM, AM 920, The Ticket. Here's your host, Sean McNamara. And welcome back. You're listening to Sports Talk West Virginia, 95.7 FM, AM 920, The Ticket. Also available on the Ticket app and at themountaineerticket.com. We have a very special guest here continuing our Mountaineers that we've had this week. You know, we had John Flowers, Deshaun Butler the other day, Coach Joe Mazzulli yesterday. Today we have K.J. Myers. Uh, K.J., thanks so much for taking some time for us. Oh, yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I want to start. We have a lot, a lot I want to get to with you since you're, you're a real interesting guy uh, with all that you're doing in your life. But, but starting, you know, coming from Jacksonville, Florida, what brought you to West Virginia for college? Uh, well, I needed to get away from what I was used to, and I wanted to try something new, new scenery. Uh, there was a lot of Florida guys actually on the team, and one guy who I grew up watching – uh, from Pop Water days, Noel Devine, and that was definitely a big inspiration. And just when I when I came up for my official visit, it was it was great as far as the fans and then the football game. And then there was a receiver who went for three touchdowns that game. So, you remember who? Yeah, very enticing. Uh, Bradley Stark. Okay, uh, yeah, first UNLV. Yep, I remember Brad Starks. And so uh, when you got here, you got here in 2012. And what 2011. was 2011. Okay, my bad, my bad. What was uh, what was your first reactions of when you when you got onto campus? What did you think of West Virginia? Quite the uh, quite the culture difference from from Jacksonville. Oh yeah, major culture shock. Uh, just as far as the hills and all the mountains, and just driving around Morgantown is very hilly, very different from what I'm used to. And you, uh, one of my all-time favorite football players, Keyshawn Johnson, wears 19. So you were there, and I always rooted for you because you were wearing 19, and that's, you know, that that's my number. Why did you choose that? Uh, well, my sister who passed away in 08, she used to wear the number nine. So I needed something with nine in it. Uh, nine was taken even when I was in high school. So I chose 19, high school, 11th grade, 12th grade. And nine was taken at West Virginia again, so I chose 19 again and kept that going, and that's the reason why. Now you uh, you registered during 2011, and then once once your career got going in 2012, 13, 14, there was a lot of a lot of changes in the team as far as how they were doing. You know, you went from seven and six to four and eight, and then you started to pick it back up. What were the uh, what was the culture around West Virginia as far as going through that tough four and eight season and then building to turn things around? Uh, yeah, well, it was really just the big change that we had as far as the head coach, you know, Coach Stu, RIP. And to Holgerson, and going from the Big East to the Big 12, it was just a, a huge just transition we had to make and we had to adapt to, and a new system we had to learn. And I think that's what made that happen. And a, a lot of the top players that was out there that was taking majority of the reps, uh, they left. So kind of like regrouping and rebuilding after that. You got a to, lot of rebuilding. You got to play with several different quarterbacks. What what was something like unique or different about each one, and what did each of the guys you got to play with bring to the table? So, um, since it was uh, different guys, it was a lot of competition. And so they were really competing with each other. I mean, they, they all had size differences, so that played a big part. Plus, you know, you run in from the slot position, which is where I was, and you look back and you see these tall O-linemen, which you don't see a quarterback behind. So that that makes it tough. But as far as it was just a high difference of um, throwing and who had the plays, who knew their receivers, that was a big thing. Who knew their receivers? Because we all were different. We all have different abilities, and the quarterback has to know that. So... That made it different too, but it was just a lot of competition, and yeah, it's a tough position. You got to play alongside some really, really talented offensive players in your time there. What are some of the memories you have on the field with the different teammates that you had during the years you were there? Uh, well, uh, one of my greatest memories is the Marshall game, uh, 2012, 
Um, finally got my call, and me and Paul Millar went in, and we was at the goal line. This was my first time on a college field, in a college game. First play, uh, he gives me a go route, a fade route in the goal line, and touchdown. Uh, we're all excited. Uh, get to the sideline. Kayvon Austin right there to meet me. He grabbed my helmet, my face mask. And then after that, Sam and Bailey comes up to me. And a number of other guys, Justin Garrison, Russell Hyatt and James. And that was one of the greatest memories I hold still. And um, probably another one is when Kayvon Austin took a kick return back. Uh, I forgot which team that was. UConn? That was a, what did you say? Was that the UConn game? Was it a home game? It was a home game, and it was the opening kickoff because I was tailgating and didn't make it into the stadium in time. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so you missed it. I did. Damn. So, yeah, I, I believe it was that game. So that was that was exciting. Yeah, exciting. What? And then just, yeah. No, keep, keep going. Sorry. Oh, yeah. And then just being around those guys and I was influenced a lot by the older guy when I came in um, so Stan and Bailey was a huge influence and just their energy they had and while they was on the field and when they was off the field and how hard they worked on and off the field and just some great guys like it was an amazing experience for me. What about off the field in Morgantown? What are you know? What are some of the things things that you remember? Any any particular you know places that you like to go? Any any places you like to eat? Maybe professors that had an impact on you? You know, what do you remember from Morgantown that didn't involve pads and a helmet? Oh yeah, well, West Virginia they have this program called the Launch Lab, and what the Launch Lab does, they help upcoming entrepreneurs and people who want to or aspire to be an entrepreneur, they basically just set them on the right path. And once I found out about that, because in 2013, that's when low life culture came to me. And, yeah, so I started working with them, and they got me in with the WVU Law. And the law, people in that program, they helped me file for the patent of the balloon. And... We went through, that was a long process. You know, patents, they take a long, a long time, longer than LLC. But months later, after I graduated and was back home, I received the letter in the mail, and there was the balloon patent. So that was a big thing, and what I want people to do, especially while they're in college, is use their resources, take advantage of those resources while they're readily available to you. And another, what's the, what's the place? High Street, that's always the place to go but uh, there was this I forgot the restaurant name but it's right on High Street they had like the crazy milkshakes so crazy burgers and chicken tailpipes tailpipes yeah okay tailpipes is your spot yeah definitely <laughs> All right, that jumps me into my next, not tailpipes, but talking about the balloon and low life. That's that's a big part of the reason I wanted to have you on because this is, you know, as far as entrepreneurship and those kind of things, as as big of a thing as I've as we've seen from a lot of WV alumni. Explain to the folks what low life culture is because just by hearing it, an outsider might, you know, could be very confused what you're talking about. What's what is low life culture? Oh yes, definitely. Well, back in 2013, I hit a a real low point in my life and that's when the idea low life came to me and at the time it was just low life lack of worries and there wasn't an acronym for life yet and there wasn't the red balloon so lack of worries i had to understand that that was the mentality once i started applying that to my life my daily just everyday life and things i was struggling with and just kept reminding myself and reminding myself lack of worries lack of worries i finally mastered lack of worries, a mentality, and then I figured out the life, which is living in fearless efforts, which is the fearless actions that follow that you get your mentality right. I started working on my actions, my fearless actions, and just started better, bettering my body language from that low point, mastered the actions, and then finally the red balloon came to me. And red symbolizing love, and the balloon symbolizes letting go. And that was just the cherry on top 
Like, you got your mentality right. You have your, your actions right. Now it's time to let go. It's time to move forward and let go of all the things that brought you to that low point. And ever since the idea, the concept helped change and save my life, my main mission has been to spread it to any and everyone. And, and today, it's, I'm happy to say, I'm honored to say that it has impacted a lot of lives. I, a couple I want to build off there. First, the balloon. You said the what the, the red represents, but why the balloon? Oh, let go. Okay. And yeah. and uh, so. how 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 now that you've patented it and low life culture's kind of become your thing. You said it's reached a lot of people. How how often do you see that around in Jacksonville and you know wherever you're wherever you're at? How much this has taken on? Uh, yeah, well, I see it a, a lot around my city, and that's because. There's a lot of high schoolers, and i actually been substituting in my city. So I've been getting into the schools and getting the bands out, and a lot of the kids and the youth, they know me from social media, Twitter, Instagram, and they often just come up to me, then it's just a lot of word of mouth. Now it's these lack of word places all over the schools, and so yeah, I'm, I'm spreading it a lot, and there's a lot of orders that's coming from the city as well. And every time I go anywhere, if anyone sees me, if I talk with anyone, I give them a bracelet. So it's definitely around. Do you guys have any products outside the bracelet? I see you've worn some headbands, things like that. Oh, yes. Have some uh, clothing. Uh, we have more accessories that's on the way, especially for this summer. And you can find any clothing on lowlifeculture.com. And how inspiring is it for you, you know, after what you went through to, you know, start this and, and develop what the lack of worries meant and, you know, all those other things to, to see others, you know, taking it on, not only because it's like a neat, unique logo and brand, but what it represents. How does that make you feel knowing that, that you started that and it's affected your life? And now it's, you know, kind of talks to some others. Oh, yes, man. It, it warms my heart and I'm truly honored and thankful. I thank God all the time just for for that and just for the feedback I receive on a daily basis and it's man it feels amazing and it's real inspiring especially just the stories I hear and how people are really using this concept and understanding it and applying it and actually practicing it the art of it over and over and over and over consistently and then it just becomes second nature and then you start to let go of things faster. And this is just the stories and the feedback I receive. So it's uh, it's amazing. Now, as far as taking that lack of worries and making it a lifestyle, you had a situation back in August that made pretty national news in Jacksonville. Can you do you, do you care to talk about what happened there uh, with the Jacksonville police? Uh, oh no, I do not care at all. But um, okay, back August nineteenth. Uh, 2017, I was falsely accused of an armed home invasion robbery. And in this, during this armed home invasion robbery, there was three armed suspects. So, and they were driving a silver Dodge Charger and they were black males. And the police, they sent out a bolo alert um, saying be on the lookout for a newer Dodge Charger, black male driver, tinted windows. Um, well, I have a Silver Dodge Charger with tinted windows, and I drove by a median where uh, some police were sitting at. And I was driving the speed limit, um, but they ended up starting to follow me, and they followed me miles down the road until I finally reached the gate gas station. And they didn't turn on their police lights or anything uh, at all. I get to the gas station, and I need to get gas. I need to use the restroom. Uh, at the gas pump, uh, get out the car. Uh, the police comes and parks at the AC unit directly behind where I'm parked at for my gas pump. Uh, still no police lights or anything. I get out of my car. I walk into the, the store. I go into the restroom. I uh, use the restroom, wash my hands, get out, walk out the store, and I look out the window of the store at my vehicle. And there's three police officers in a triangular position uh, surrounding my car. And, uh, man, 
I didn't know what to think. I was so confused. I mean, that's not the lifestyle I live, and I know that I haven't done anything wrong. And this is around like nine something in the morning, and so I go back into the restroom, um, go into the stall. I call my mother. I tell her to come up to the gate gas station that's close to our home, and oh man, and uh, the police is surrounding my car. And I don't know why, with their guns out, and I don't know why. And then later on, later on, um, they finally come to the restroom. They tell me to come out with my hands up. I walk out with my hands out first, and uh, they get me down. They double the cuffs on my wrist, and later on down, um, they basically find out that I have nothing to do with this, and for hours they're looking for three armed suspects that are armed with assault rifles. So that's who they think I am. They think I'm one of those three uh, suspects. And also, um, recently before that, uh, there was two police officers uh, hospitalized by assault rifles. So that also just added on to uh, the police and them just thinking about themselves and how these assault rifles is very bad and just that's what they were thinking I am. So my life was was really on the line and I'm just in the dark and I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. I don't know what I did. I know but I know I didn't do nothing. And that was the sad part about it all. Like my life was really on the line and in their hands. And it was very scary. Uh very scary. And so later on, um they do their searching, they're searching everywhere. I'm in the police car in the back of handcuffs. Uh, they have the radio on in the car and they're just searching everywhere and they're saying clear, clear, store clear. Searching my car, car clear. Um, car clear, everything clear. And then they finally basically say, um, well, we don't think you're the person we're looking for, but we're gonna take you to jail for reckless driving and resisting arrest was nonviolent, and and that was after SWAT team came and breached out two of my windows out of my charger, my back left rear window, and then my rear rear, rear shield window, uh, looking for these two other suspects that they thought were was with me, but I'm by myself, uh, have no guns or weapons or contraband or anything, and. They're just searching their hardest, and it's 20 Jacksonville police officers on scene. There's plus the SWAT team and the helicopter, plus two uh, news stations. And I'm out there with my lack of worry shirt on, first of all. Uh, that was just bad because, I mean, that's my city news. Jacksonville is a huge city. Uh, people that come up to me all the time saying I've seen all the news, and then they start just telling me just touching stories and and just how they feel for me and glad I'm alive. And it was terrible. So I ended up spending uh, the day in jail after that, and I didn't get out until 10 p.m. that night. Uh, my mother bailed me out, um, and then I had to do four court appearances until they finally dropped the charges. And... Yeah. that's where it is man. today. And how how much did that did that mindset that you've been able to develop? I know you're you're a man of faith as well, and in, in that as as well as your lack of worries. How much did that help you get through that that difficult time? Oh my gosh, man! It was <laughs> it's really uh, the lifestyle and God was the only thing I could turn to. Um, it was it was very dark uh, space I was in. I was put in and. There was nobody but God and just my faith and lack of words and everything I've been uh, just practicing and, and working on with my life. And it helped me stay strong. And yeah, there was some times where I, I broke down and um, uh, tears came out, especially when I'm in the back of the car and they let my family and my mother come up to the car and give me their last remarks before they take me downtown to the jail. But, um, broke down then and numerous other times I just I just broke down but I kept reminding myself of lack of words and um, just be thankful you know, just be thankful and everything is going to work its way out itself out and 
everyone reaps what they what they sow. So, and there's a lot of stuff I couldn't control, and that's with that balloon of letting go. You have to you have to let it go because uh, you can't control it. I was in no control um, at, at all. Couldn't say anything. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't get any information on what was going on. Uh, it, it was terrible. Damn so, it. but I'm, I'm definitely. Well, I was gonna say, and now it seems like you've been able to been able to grow from that, and you know, you let it go, and and continue to do great things in your life. Uh, you're back on the football field recently, correct? Playing flag football. Yeah, the new flag football league. Uh, we just recently lost, so we're out of the tournament, but it was fun. It was an amazing experience, and I played well, so it was definitely great being back out there. Talk a little bit more about the league. I've I've heard a little bit about it. If it's the same one that I've heard about, with with some, you know, there's there were some big names kind of playing in that. Is that the same league? Where where's it started? Well, a little bit more about the league. Yes, that's the, that's the same league uh, with uh, Mike Vick. He he has a team. You have uh, Ocho Cinco. You have Nate Robinson. You know, he's a basketball player, okay. but he has a team. And uh, so those are the pros. And then they had they started off. The tournament, you played two games, and each game was for a $5,000 prize. And after you win those two games, you move on to the next round of 32 teams, which was the one we just had up in New York, uh, well, actually New Jersey at the Jets practice facility. And the first game, uh, they take like seven regions in the United States, uh, I chose the Canton, Ohio region. That's why I went to my first game. And then they play there, and they move on to the next. And now after these 32 teams just got done, the next, I believe the game is on June 30th, and it's on NFL Network. So And the cash prize is way larger as well. So that would definitely be something to watch. Um, it's, it's fun. It's amazing. It's well organized. I love how they have it set up. And everything they're doing as far as marketing and social media wise and it's, it's great exposure for guys who still love to just play the game of football did you uh was there anyone on your team that you played against other than the guys you mentioned people around here might recognize oh yeah i had uh Will divine he was on my team jared brown was on my team okay um so those are the the main west virginia uh guys and connor alia as well. He was actually my first roommate uh, when we got up there. He played receiver as well. So those were the, were the main guys from West Virginia. Does Jarrett Brown still have the cannon he had when he was here? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. He looks great out there. He needs to be still playing somewhere. Yeah. So, him and Noel Devine. Actually, Noel Devine is still <laughs> Noel Devine. Like, Man, it was it was great uh, playing with those two guys. Actually, like I'm very honored to play with them guys because I came when I came in. Of course, they were gone. So, and I was just always in high school. I was watching their highlight tapes while they was at West Virginia, and uh, to finally get to play with them, uh, it was a great experience. Excellent. Do you keep up with any of your other other teammates that you used to play with here? So yeah, um, especially uh, through social media, we keep up a lot with one another, and we're actually uh, coming together more and building something, uh, a big platform together, and just bringing our ideas and just what we have going on together into just one big machine, and we're going to move forward together. So that's definitely exciting. So. Yes, a lot of guys that I came in with uh, back in 2011, uh, we're still really close. What's next for you and what's next for low-life culture? Well, it's taking the culture to the next level. Um, I feel like it's it's time. I've been doing a lot by myself uh, with no investors or anything like that. So, um, but I'm at a point where I actually need some help. Um, so I'm looking for investors. And I'm looking for just people who believe and who want to help me help uh, many of lives and just 
just expansion and more exposure. And that's that's my main focus, really expanding and getting the message out to more and more because this concept can be applied to any aspect or anyone in life, and that's really the beauty of it. So that's and that's where I am right now. All right. Before we let you go, tell the people where they can uh, where they can follow you on social media, how they can get connected with low life culture, and uh, you know where they where they can find you and keep up with what you and your company are doing. Oh, yes. Well, my Instagram and my Twitter is I am Low Life KJ. Uh, the Low Life Culture uh, Instagram is the Low Life Culture, and the Twitter is LL Culture. And you, you can also go to your app store and. Type in Low Life Culture and download the Low Life Culture app and turn the notifications on and you'll receive just random, just uplifting, motivating, inspiring messages randomly. And you never know when one could be right on time and really fit your life. So, yes, and of course, lowlifeculture.com is the website. All right. Well, KJ, I really appreciate you calling. This was uh, some good, informative, insightful stuff. Hopefully our you know, listeners in Morgantown and Fairmont enjoyed it. And, you know, thanks again. Best of luck with everything you're doing moving forward. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. And that was KJ Myers. I want to thank him again for coming on. Really, really interesting story there. I was following that situation over in August, and you know, it's always terrible when you see something like that happen to somebody. And just the type of character that he has, and the type of player he, player and man that he was, to be able to grow from that and be stronger. Uh, big thank you to him for joining us today, and and you know, being open and kind of being candid and telling that story. Uh, hopefully, you guys, you guys enjoyed it. It was, uh, I, I thought it was a. Really, really good, really good uplifting story from a great uplifting young man. And uh, unfortunately, his flag football team got got eliminated. But boy, I I would have I would have signed up to watch him and uh, him and Jarrett Brown and Noel Devine get out there and play it again because they they can really play. We're gonna kick at the break. When we get back, we're gonna talk uh, more NBA. We got the Pirates, some other MLB news happening, and then we're gonna wrap up. One and a half hour left. You're listening to Sports Talk West Virginia, ninety five seven FM, AM nine twenty, the ticket. <laughs> 